Hey everybody, I'm Alex Stevenson and welcome to this week's episode of the Mortar Pod, your weekly video podcast for completely custom Magic the Gathering sets. And uh, they're based on movies, books, TV shows. This week we're doing an old comedy favorite from the 90s, um, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Now, Jim Carrey had been on uh, In Living Color. And he'd done a couple, you know, he'd done a couple of 80s flicks at the time. Once Bitten being a vampire movie that I remember seeing him in. Um, in Living Color is where you first really got to see that Jim Carrey was such a over-the-top sort of comedic actor. Um, Ace Ventura Pet Detective really brought his style of humor to the mainstream. And, uh, it I mean, it made him explode. Ace Ventura Pet Detective, just the concept of the movie sounds terrible, in my opinion. It, it honestly sounds like it would have been the one of the most, like, B-trash movies you could possibly imagine, just based on the description, the name. There's really nothing appealing about the name of the movie and the concept of the movie. But Jim Carrey's performance in it was just so outrageous and over-the-top that it became it became an instant hit. Ace Ventura escalated Jim Carrey to this brand new level of comedy and uh nobody really does comedy like Jim Carrey does either. I mean, Jim Carrey's humor style of humor is so unique and stylized that uh nobody can even really emulate that Jim Carrey humor. It's just so so insane. And even Jim Carrey had a hard time kind of breaking out away from that style of comedy because he did the Truman Show and uh, he did, I believe it was the Majestic, you know, so he wanted to show that he was capable of, you know, acting that wasn't over-the-top comedy. But Ace Ventura is the essence of Jim Carrey's humor. And uh, I remember seeing it in the theater and, and just laughing the entire time. I could not stop laughing at how funny Jim Carrey was in that movie. I mean, that movie is so Jim Carrey driven too the entire time. Like you almost forget that there's anybody else in that movie besides Jim Carrey. He's so captivating in it, but uh, let's, let's get into the cards. Ace Ventura, pet detective. So if you don't remember the movie, Ace Ventura played by Jim Carrey is a pet detective, much like the title of the movie suggests. He's uh, gets a job Searching for a kidnapped mascot for the Miami Dolphins. And uh, it, this breaks into a much more convoluted sort of complex storyline. But I'll uh, explain as we go. Let's get right into it. So to start it off, Ace Ventura himself. Ace Ventura, pet detective. So two red, two green, legendary human mythic creature. He's a 3-4. He has the one of the mechanics of the set, Animal Bond. And Animal Bond is ape, bird, and whale creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have hex proof. And uh, he has two green and tap. Search your library for an ape, bird, or whale creature card and reveal that card. Shuffle your library, then put the card on top of it. So plus one, plus one, and hex proof is a very awesome um, lord effect. Uh, ape, bird, and whale creatures. There's There's more animals that he bonds with. Uh, throughout the Ace Ventura movies, but specific to this set, um, you'll see why I, I chose those creature types. And he does, I mean, in fact, interact with those creature types in the movie, so it kind of works out. Uh, being able to sort of worldly tutor up those creatures is certainly a powerful effect and I think makes him worthy of being a mythic. Uh, so next we have Monkey Companion. Now, there is no, uh, I understand there's a difference between monkeys and apes, but there is no monkey creature type. There is only ape creature type. So, Monkey Companion is forced to be an ape. And this is not uh, unprecedented. If you look up other monkey cards in Magic, they also have been, they're also apes. 
So you're going to have to uh, allow that. And I think the whale creature that I have in the set too might offend some people. But Monkey Companion is too green for a 2-2 uncommon ape creature. Uh, Monkey Companion can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. This, of course, being a reference to the fact that monkeys like to cr climb trees. So unless you're flying or you have reach, you're not going to be able to block the Monkey Companion. So a 2-drop two 2-2 two -two that basically has a, a pretty good evasion on it, I think is actually a pretty nice card. Next we have the Albino Pigeon. Now this card is kind of taking a little bit of a cue from the Miracle cards um, from Avacyn Restored. Uh, but Albino Pigeon is one white. It's a 1-1 one, one, uh, flyer. It's a common. It's a bird creature, of course. And... Uh, it has, you may reveal Albino Pigeon when you draw it, if it's the first card you drew this turn. If you do, you gain three life. So, um, unlike Miracles, when you're drawing your starting hand, technically your first card you, you could draw would could possibly be an Albino Pigeon, which means you could essentially start the game at 23 life. I still don't think it's overpowered. I actually think it's kind of an interesting ability. And um, Miracles didn't go over too well. Um, well, with some people they did, but people did seem to think at times they felt a little overpowered or they sort of dis destroyed the essence of the game at times. It was hard for people to exactly place their fingers on why. I think it was stuff like Bonfire of the Damned where it could be turn eight and you have this incredibly advanced board state. Your opponent has nothing and uh, there's just no hope for them to win except... They flip a Bonfire of the Damned and win the game out of nowhere. So I think it was the out of nowhere essence of the the mechanic that felt at times kind of a feel bad. Uh, but it was called a Miracle card. So what did you expect a Miracle? What else would you expect a Miracle to be? Um, anyway, the Albino Pigeon is something that Ace Ventura... This is only sort of tacitly mentioned in the movie, but it, it makes a couple appearances. Ace Ventura is, uh, besides searching for Snowflake, the missing, kidnapped uh, Miami Dolphins mascot, uh, he's searching for this rare I albino pigeon that uh, I believe has like a $10,000 reward. And uh, he, he chases after it a couple scenes in the movie. In fact, in, in the end of the movie, um, it has to do with the albino pigeon once again. So definitely thought that was worthy of making a card. Next we have Snowflake, the dolphin mascot himself, or herself. I actually don't know uh, which gender the Snowflake is. Um, but Snowflake, dolphin mascot, uh, dol dolphin mascot is a 5-drop, 3 and 2 blue for a 3-5 whale creature. And yes, there are no dolphin creature types, so I had to make it a whale. Dolphins and whales, close enough, right? Maybe not, but in my book they are. I think dolphins might be related, at the very least, to the, the whales, so this one is okay. So uh, a 5-drop, 3-5, it's a rare, it's a legend, it's a legendary creature, because it is named. Other creatures you control get plus 0, plus 1, so it has a little bit of a lord effect, and at the beginning of each end step, tap each creature that was blocked by another creature you control this turn. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step, so it makes your your blockers uh, basically have the sort of like the wall of frost effect a little bit or um, Triton Tactics was sort of a card that inspired this ability a little bit. But uh, kind of an interesting Lord effect at sort of a unique uh, casting cost for the card too. So I, I think Snowflake would be kind of a cool little Lord to play. Um, not a ton of decks that can play it because blue typically does control and not, uh, you know, beat down or heavy creature decks, but still could be a card that certainly saw some limited play, probably not too much constructed play. Okay. Next we have publicist Melissa Robinson played by friends, famous Courtney Cox. And, uh, she plays the love interest of Ace Ventura in the movie. She also is sort of the PR uh, person for the Miami Dolphins, um, and is her boss is breathing down her neck to find the dolphin and get it back. So publicist Melissa Robinson is two and two white for a one four legendary uh, human creature. She's a rare. She has X and tap 
search your library for a legendary creature card with converted mana cost X or less and reveal that card. Shuffle your library, then put the card on top of it. So um, a little bit similar to the sort of the rebel creature cards from the past, but uh, basically her job is to go out and find the legendary creature cards. Uh, she ends up hiring Ace Ventura, so that specifically is what this mechanic is referring to, but um, Ace Ventura becomes recommended to her, and she ends up hiring him to find Snowflake. Uh, next we have Officer Emilio, plays by, played by Tone Loke. Uh, the musician, which is kind of kind of cool. I think he even is played during the end credits, one of his songs. Uh, but he's a buddy of Ace. He's sort of reluctant to help Ace. Um, but in once the information really comes out, he, he is a good guy and, and helps him out. So Officer Emilio is too white for a 2-3 legendary human creature, a rare as well. He has a white and tap, tap target creature. And this has sort of become a theme for... Uh, police officer cards. I've made quite a few police officer cards now, and I like the tap target creature effect on them. It feels very police officer, very uh, you're under arrest sort of feeling. Um, and then Officer Emilio also has two white and tap return Officer Emilio and another target creature you control to its owner's hand. So uh, sort of like a save from removal effect, but... Um, because you have to return Officer Emilio too, it can be a little bit clunky at times. But still, uh, certainly a powerful effect, uh, being able to protect your creatures from removal, of course. We've seen this on in green with the uh, Teamer Sabertooth. Uh, but we've also seen it in white in the past from stuff like uh, White Mane Lion. And uh, I'm trying to think of a couple other ones. White Mane Lion is the one that specifically comes to mind as like a white creature that protects from removal. Okay, next we have Sergeant Aguado, and this is sort of like one of the police officer antagonists to Ace Ventura. Um, he kind of tries to belittle Ace for, you know, being a pet detective, but they have some pretty funny interactions. Jim Carrey ends up uh, one-upping Sergeant Aguado most of the time. So Sergeant Aguado, good guy and a bad guy at the same time, definitely cast as a bad guy in the movie, but he's still a police officer and still trying to do the right thing at times. So Sergeant Aguado is a white and a black for a 2-2 rare legendary human creature. He has a white and tap, tap target creature like Officer uh, Emilio, and he also has three colorless, a white and a black, tap. Target player loses life for each tapped creature he or she controls. So kind of an interesting ability. Um, it is, it's an expensive ability to use, but the fact that you could end of turn, uh, use it and make your opponent lose life for each tap creature they're controlled and untap and use it again. So you can almost do like two times as much life loss for each tap creature they control if you use it like that. So pretty powerful effect actually, but because he's multicolor and he's a legend, I think it's, it's fine and balanced. Um, next we have a quarterback, Dan Marino, who is actually played by the quarterback Dan Marino in the movie. And uh, he plays a sort of pivotal role as uh, being someone, uh, basically the main suspect in the movie is this kicker, a fictional kicker named Ray Finkel, who um, missed a kick that cost the Dolphins the Super Bowl. And uh, he caught just tons of backlash for it. And it sort of traumatized him. And, uh, Ace suspects that he's behind the kidnapping of Snowflake, but then we see it goes much deeper than that. Um, so quarterback Dan Marino actually has a mechanic that I originally made in my Wayne's World custom magic set. It's called Celebrity, and this one was actually kind of a popular mechanic of all the ones that I made. So I thought bringing it back, um, whenever there's like a, an, a celebrity playing themselves in a movie, I might bring this mechanic back. Um, I am going to do it for this one at the very least, so... Quarterback Dan Marino is one colorless and two white for a 3-3 mythic legendary human creature. He has the mechanic Celebrity, which is at the beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 white human creature token named Fan onto the battlefield. And then black creatures your opponents control must attack you each turn if able. So interesting at the very least, you get a free 1-1 white human creature each turn, which is very good. He's an efficiently costed body, 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. 
and uh, he forces black creatures your opponent's control to attack you each turn of Fable. Um, and that is referring to the fact that he was hated by Ray Finkel. Ray Finkel actually blamed uh, Dan Marino for missing the kick because he said Dan did not hold the football laces out. So you never really find out uh, if that's true or not. Um, but whether or not it's true, uh, Ray Finkel is definitely holding Dan Marino uh, to blame for that. So next we have uh, Ray Finkel, the kicker, who is played by Sean Young. So we find out this is kind of an early, uh, one of the early examples of a transgender person in a movie. And uh, way before transgender was even a word. Uh, Ray Finkel, the kicker, Played by Sean Young, and I didn't actually realize this until I saw a close-up picture of uh, Ray Finkel that I believe it, it really is Sean Young that they put a mustache on and, and put a wig on. I'm pretty sure, which is interesting. I, I never realized that as a kid. But uh, Ray Finkel, the kicker, is three colorless and a red for a 2-3 legendary human creature. He's a rare. And whenever you lose four or more life, you may exile Ray Finkel, the kicker, if you do. Search your library for a card named Lieutenant Lois Einhorn and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. And then Ray Finkel the Kicker has tap. Ray Finkel the Kicker deals one damage to target creature and one damage to the creature's controller. So that that ability is referring to the fact that Ray Finkel is an actual pretty good kicker. And you get to see Lois Einhorn, the you know alter ego of Ray Finkel, do a kick in high heels at the end. And it's still a pretty uh, accurate kick. Uh, so, um, we do eventually find out Ray Finkel is Lois Einhorn. It's very, very confusing. Uh, the first time I saw the movie, because I, I, that I didn't put it together, that it took me that long. Um, I think I was just so young; it, it was like just such a foreign concept to me. But uh, the ability is supposed to be whenever you lose four or more life. So that's what traumatizes Ray Finkel into um, losing his identity and altering into Lieutenant Lois Einhorn, who is the final card of the set. So Lieutenant Lois Einhorn is three colorless, a black, and a red for a 3-3 three, three legendary human creature, a rare. And uh, she has two colorless, a black, and a red, gain control of target creature until end of turn, untap that creature, gains haste until end of turn, activate this ability only during your turn. So this ability is kind of referring to a couple things about Lois Einhorn in the movie. Um... First and foremost, she is actually responsible for kidnapping not only Snowflake, but Dan Marino at some point in the movie. So that's the gain control of target creature. But on top of that, um, she also sort of manipulates the rest of the cops into buying her story. So no one really suspects her because she, you know, she's the lieutenant of this police department and uh, she's not a suspect. So she's kind of gaining the trust of other creatures as well. So this ability really, I think, functions well for uh, her character. So that is it for the Ace Ventura custom magic set. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're also enjoying the uh, Cons of Tarkir draft videos with Fate Reforged as well as the Cube draft videos. And uh, uh, Dragons of Tarkir is just right around the corner. So uh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to recording draft videos for that. And uh, we'll see you next week.